When one thinks of Ice Age bovids in North America, they tend to think of bison along with extinct giant musk oxen. But another bovid crossed into what is now Alaska during the last Ice Age or the last glacial maximum, the yaks. Fossil yaks are designated as both Brunelli have been found in Alaska and they have dated to the Pleistocene Epoch. Additionally, a close related yak, both by coincidence, existed on the opposite side of the Beringian Wind Bridge in what is now eastern Russia. This is quite far from the more restricted range that the two species of modern yak primarily live in today. Now that we've covered the yaks themselves, let's see what sustained them and their relatives. A green oasis in a frozen land. Central Alaska 12,000 years ago was sheltered from the ice sheets that covered much of the northern hemisphere at the time. The environment here favored grasslands, with common herbivores including bovids such as bison, arctic horses such as Egress Alaska, which I covered in a previous video, and the woolly mammoth, along with other herbivores like stag moose, extinct musk oxen, and the extinct western camel. This was part of a generally ice-free mammoth step biome that spanned from France to Alaska and Canada during the Pleistocene. Ice Age yaks do not appear to have been as common as the other large herbivores, but have been identified at sites with them. Mastodon were present in the area during warmer past interglacials, but it is uncertain if they would have coexisted with the Ice Age yaks. While sheep appear to have been contemporaries of Ice Age yaks and bison, Saiga antelope were contemporaries, being widespread until the end of the last ice age. In addition, caribou also lived in the area during this time, where they were a staple of the human population. Moose were moving into Alaska, but preferred a different habitat than the mammoth steppe, being forest dwellers. This would help them thrive when the environment started to favor taiga forests, which will be covered later in this video. The Predators The Beringian lion occupied Alaska at this time, preying on large bovids like bison and yak. In fact, preserved bison nicknamed Blue Babe exhibits telltale marks of being killed by lions. Extinct Beringian wolves and giant short-faced bears were also among the various predators here during the time. Saber-toothed cats such as Homo fumsia were among the larger predators, though it was more widely built than their cousins in California. Recent evidence indicates they were social predators. Grizzly or brown bears were contemporary predators, along with giant short waist bears, and occasionally prey on bovids such as bison and yak, even in modern times. One primate species, the human, was and still is a predator of both these species, and archaeological sites confirm the hunting of large bovines like bison and yak 12,000 years ago. And these were some of the known predators that could have preyed on the Alaskan yak. The dire wolf was known to have crossed Beringia based on the skull found in China, but it is uncertain if they were still around in Beringia to have been contemporaries of these bovines. Remains in Beringia itself are not known. If they did, there would have been potential predators for Alaskan yaks being adapted for hunting megafauna. In particular, they often preyed on the related bison, as shown at various sites in North America. Extinction. As the Ice Age ended, the area became more of a forested taiga as the environment grew warmer and wetter. Browsers such as the moose began to take the place of the grazers as the dominant herbivores replacing the bison, horses, and mammoths. And then elsewhere, the type of moss and lichen dominated tundra we're familiar with today replaced the rest of the mammoth steppe throughout their range. Caribou were able to thrive in both of these new environments and survived in great numbers well to historic times. Eventually, the once prevalent mammoth step bomb virtually disappeared from across Alaska and the world in general, though it left a few remnants in remote areas of its former range. As of the 1970s and onwards, humans were blamed as a contributing factor, but some arguments have made against this on the grounds that the human population was too small to do such damage in an age before the Industrial Revolution. In recent years, attempts have been made to restore the mammoth step biome. Even now, Pleistocene Park already uses yaks to help restore that local environment, along with other bovids such as bison. Perhaps
perhaps one day Wild Yak may once again roam the wilderness of the Alaskan tundra with these restoration projects.